morning everyone today we are going to discuss the female urology and functional urology topics for urology viva exam preparation we are going to discuss three scenarios we are going to time every scenario by the clock 10 minutes i will not interfere with the trainee during the 10 minutes so it will be exactly like an exam and after the 10 minutes we will have some feedback and uh, discussion on how that scenario went well happy to start yes please okay uh, keep your mobile muted because i may be sending some messages during the session as a feedback yeah your time starts now you yes. have a 28 year old female presenting with history of pain while passing urine how are you going to evaluate so i review this uh, lady in uh, my female dedicated uh, urology clinic um, i will assess uh, the patient uh, history uh, concentrating on the pain while passing the duration and uh, whether the pain is on uh, emptying of the bladder or on the bladder filling I will also ask about any associated lower urinary tract uh, symptoms like boding or surgery symptoms and the presence of um, uh, incontinence. I would also ask about any uh, obvious triggering or relieving uh, factor from the history, about any red flag symptoms like uh, hematuria, urinary tract uh, uh, infection, uh, or the presence of uh, palpable mass. I will also ask about the patient uh, drinking uh, habit uh, and any smoking or illicit uh, drug. And also I will ask about her past medical history and the use of any medication, past surgical history, especially any urological procedure, any uh, pregnancy or childbirth uh, before, and also about any history of uh, radio chemotherapy. Um, I will ask about whether there is any impact of this uh, pain on her social uh, life, our uh, sexual life. And then um, I will do a focused uh, examination in the presence of a chaperone with the patient consent, a uh, general examination looking uh, for uh, any palpable uh, bladder or tenderness in the suprapubic area. And then I will examine uh, the patient uh, perineum, uh, both in supine and left lateral uh, position or inspection, looking for any uh, uh, visible abnormality like urethral carankill or um, urethral diverticulum, any prolapse, the degree of sternization of the external genitalia. I will ask the patient to cough to see if there is uh, any uh, leak. And I will complete my examination by uh, speculum. Um, and then I will assist the patient accordingly. Okay. Uh, History-wise, there is nothing significant. Uh, she is uh, married. She has uh, one child and uh, the child born by normal vaginal delivery. Examination uneven full. Her BMI is 28, but uh, abdominal and pervaginal examination were normal. How are you going to proceed? So her main complaint is just pain and passing urine. Yeah. Okay, and there is no history of use of any um, illicit drug, any ketamine or anything? No. Okay. So I will, I will proceed by um, um, checking the urine, looking for any infection uh, or blood in the urine. Um, uh, I will send the culture if there is anything uh, suspicious in the urine dip stick. Um, I will uh, uh, also um, arrange for the patient uh, to have, uh, especially if the symptoms is persist for a while, I will arrange for her to have a flexible cystoscopy. I'm looking for any possible cause uh, for um, uh, this pain associated uh, with urine. And also I will arrange imaging in the form of urinary ultrasounds. Her ultrasounds were normal. Flexible cystoscopy is normal, but she find it quite painful during insertion of the scope and also the filling of the bladder. Yeah, and um, this patient, if obviously I couldn't find any 
any positive uh, finding in my investigation or in the history. So therefore, uh, my suspicion is uh, painful bladder syndrome or interstitial cystitis, which is mainly a diagnosis of exclusion. Um, and according to the International Continent Society, um, any chronic pelvic uh, uh, pain, pressure or discomfort related to the bladder uh, associated with one or more urinary symptoms is a diagnostic for uh, painful bladder syndrome. Okay, what is painful bladder syndrome? It is a it is an, a chronic uh, condition affecting the bladder, mainly in the form of uh, pain related to the bladder filling or emptying, and may associate with other urinary symptoms like frequency, urgency, and nocturia. The exact etiology is uh, unknown, um, and it's uh, usually diagnosed by exclusion of other. Um, causes of uh, chronic pelvic pain. The pain may be uh, uh, perceived by the patient in the bladder, uh, in the urethra, in the vagina, rectum, uh, or in the uh, back. Um, the etiology is not clear, but they think that um, there is a loss of the protective uh, gag layer from the bladder, which causes permeation of the urine inside, and then it will induce further irritation of the uh, bladder mucosa, uh, and, and uh, then the patient will enter into um, a circle of, of event related uh, to that. Okay, so how are you going to proceed further? So for this patient, uh, I will assess uh, her symptom further using a validated uh, questionnaire. Uh, we have the uh, interstitial cystitis uh, uh, symptom index and interstitial status uh, problem index. Um, each one of them uh, ask mainly about uh, four main domains, which is the frequency, urgency, nocturia, uh, and the pain. So I'll assess the patient uh, according uh, to these. I will make sure that there is uh, no infection. I have, I have excluded other causes from the history. I will start the treatment by, of the patient by conservative treatment in the form of um, education and explana explanation for the patient about the nature of the disease, that this is a chronic disease which will wax and wane you know, over time, and uh, the patient should have a realistic uh, expectation. Um, I will uh, uh, support the patient by referral to a pain clinic or, or provide a psychological uh, support if it is needed uh, early uh, in the disease. Uh, and then I can take her management uh, forward accordingly. Okay. Um, what is the total score for the interstitial cystitis scoring system? Uh, for the international, for the IC um, Symptom index it is 20 and for the problem index it is 16. So what are the components of the problem index? Uh, it is uh, it is it's an answer for the same question, the same four question, which is the frequency, urgency, nocturia, and pain. But uh, the answer will be either uh, no problem, small problem, um, some pro problem sometimes, uh, or severe problem, as far as I can remember. Okay. Her symptom score comes as uh, 16, okay. and her problem index comes as uh, 14. How are you going to proceed further? So for this patient, uh, obviously because of significant um, uh, symptoms, uh, she need to have some treatment in addition to the conservative therapy. Uh, if I can add just to the conservative therapy, I will ask the patient to keep a diary for all the fluid, uh, for the oral fluid and food, which may trigger the problem, try to avoid it. Um, um, and then since her symptoms persist, I will start with uh, medical treatment. Uh, medical treatment, we have two types, either oral or intravasacal uh, treatment. The oral treatment uh, include amitriptyline, um, uh, antihistamine like cymetidine, and also uh, sodium bentosan, uh, polysulfate, ilmiron, uh, which thought to replenish the um, gag layer in the bladder. Uh, the intravasacal therapy, I am aware of uh, the use of uh, IE aloril, which is a combination of chondroitine sulfate and hyaluronic uh, acid. It can be given uh, as installation inside the bladder once weekly for uh, four to six weeks, and then maintenance once monthly for four to six uh, months. 
Um, also, um, some cocktail have been used before, like the Parson cocktail, which is composed of heparin, uh, bicarbonate, and dignocaine, uh, can be uh, tried on those patients. Um, um, so I will, I will go to the next step, which is the medical treatment. Okay. How this IALURIL works? Uh, the hyaluronic is a combination of chondroitin uh, sulfate and uh, hyaluronic acid, which are both component of the uh, um, uh, gag layer in the bladder. So they provide uh, a protective uh, layer uh, above the bladder mucosa and reducing the symptoms. Okay. Is there any oral available medications? Uh, the main oral medication, we can use emetryptyline, especially if the patient uh, um, having pain and anxious. Uh, uh, the one which is proven uh, to be effective in uh, reversing the process of uh, um, uh, interstitial circuit is sodium pentosan polysulfate, Elmiron, which is given as 100 mg three times daily. However, it is not available all the time and is a little bit expensive. Okay, we will stop there. Again, um, good presentation. Uh, I have no major concerns. Everything went well. Um, the, I mean, if I really comb across your presentation and try to pick something, maybe obstetric history, you haven't uh, brought it yourself. Uh, sometimes a vaginal injury can happen with uh, vaginal delivery and that may be the reason for the pain. So obstetric wow. history, how many children, by which way the child was born, whether it's a vaginal delivery or cesarean. Um, Festicle cystoscopy findings are very important. Um, um, I said that uh, insertion of the scope was very painful and uh, bladder filling was also painful. But uh, during subsequent sentences, you mentioned that flexible cystoscopy and ultrasound, everything was normal. So don't try to ignore the findings that painful itself is enough to... Uh, give you a kind of an insight okay this may be something like interstitial cystitis or chronic pelvic pain syndrome okay yeah because to get the proper glomerulations you may have to do a cystoscopy under ga so under local the pain itself of course there is a lot of subjective changes patients may complain pain without any reason it may not be ic but that every small clue will help you and uh, there is a European study group on interstitial cystitis, which is, um, uh, they have produced some journals, articles, and then uh, that they also use the same IC questionnaire. It is nice to use the ICIQ, the international questionnaire, what we discussed, but try to bring in the European study of interstitial cystitis consensus guidelines also. Okay. And uh, I like the way you presented the realistic expectations. That's very important because patient may think, okay, I have this pain. I'm going to see the doctor. He's going to give me a medicine and then I will be fine in a week's time. This is not that type of disease. So it's very important to have realistic expectations and gradual slow improvement and possibility of long-term treatment. Um, symptom index, you made it very simple. That's the way it has to be. Four things, fun and pain fun means frequency urgency nocturia the normal storage symptoms and pain everything is coded up to five only in the pain there is no score one if you want to score quite high marks if you pick that specific points like uh, for pain in the symptom index there is no score one it's only zero two three four five rest of them we have zero one two three four five Problem okay. index, again, it's the same fun and pain. Uh, the only thing we are quantifying the problem. It's almost like a bothersome index in the IPS scoring. And uh, remember, no problem, very small problem, small problem, medium problem, big problem. Um, if you remember, don't miss the very small problem. If you miss very small problem, you can't get that uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, no problem is zero. That's very important. Similarly, in symptom index also, if the symptom is not there, it is zero. So always store scarring from zero, not like IPSs. So compare and contrast so that you can remember better. These scenarios, if somebody is not strong in IC symptom score index, they will still get good marks. But if you are strong in the scoring system, if you have demonstrated that you have used it in day-to-day -day life, that will really fetch you very, very good marks. Okay.